Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, this is our ongoing meditation session. Be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, make it straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual we'll take few minutes for ourselves to become more clear what is meditation and what is not meditation. Because when you recognize what is not meditation, that also helps for your clarity to develop your practice. And when it comes to what is not meditation, so nowadays it is very famous, this concentration and contemplation. And another thing is dhyana or the, the samadhi or the tranquility meditation. So this all part of the practice, but when, and, and when it comes to the deeper, the meaning of meditation, when we go to the very root, it comes from the bhavana. It's a Pali word. So this bhavana, there is no kind of like a similar word in English. Because different languages has a different kind of interpretations. So when it comes to the bhavana, it is a very very kind of like a very closer meaning that we can gain cultivation of the mind, development of the mind. So it is not a kind of like a freezing the mind or neutralizing the mind or voiding the mind. Then when it comes to the cultivation of the mind, so here, not the cultivation of the thoughts. So the cultivation of your mind means the awareness. So the thoughts are part of the, the mind. But the very essence of the, the mind is the awareness. So what will happen when you develop the awareness, when you cultivate the awareness? The recognition is going to become very clear. So once you have the clear recognition, an understanding will come. 
but nowadays what we does using some kind of thoughts certain kind of thoughts we develop our thinking ability and out of that we try to to understand something so it's kind of like a, become more intellectual understanding and even when it come to our mind when we even though we close our eyes and sometimes what happen inside our mind this thoughts pattern always keep working talking to us and but when it come to the cultivation of the mind when it develop the awareness rather than listening to that inner voice you start to recognize the very moment that what you experience that recognition is not a kind of like a contemplate on thoughts reflection on thoughts or imagination even it's not a kind of like a, that a meditating regarding some kind of repetition it is the very moment of experience it's the the very simply the very present moment of experience so when it come to the present moment of experience there are many ways that you can access to that experience one is through your body we call it kaya anupasana so the contemplate on the body and the bodily action and the body the postures structure inner and outer structure and the body parts bodily nature this all related to the body so the observing inhalation exhalation also part of the that category so inhalation and exhalation is not a, something that happen intentionally it's it's a bodily action the body inhale exhale so basically remember that in the beginning and when you observe it will help for you because you no need to do anything you no need to inhale or exhale intensely because the the body does it so that's what you have to observe what is the, that happening with the body so that is one thing another thing is the the very feelings the moment by moment related to the body related to the mind the feelings arise our life always interfere with the feelings so deeply you observe and these feelings moment by moment moment by moment change there is no permanent concrete independence feelings exist once you start to observe you can see that another part is the mind when you observe the mind the, the thought patterns you will see thought arise without any invitation without any intention sometimes thoughts come to us and sometimes thought disappear and it has no power over you it's not kind of like uh, you are not thinking it's happening if you think any time you can think whatever you want but you can't see sometimes that uh, we have reminders everywhere around us so if you think how you forget why you forget sometimes you know there are very simple things 
you 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 can't remember it disappeared it's gone and suddenly when you do something else suddenly it come to your mind another one is that the very nature the very moment of that deeply dhamma or the this natural behavior phenomena happening within us so contemplating on this all recognizing this all once you start to see one thing then little by little when you go deeper you start to recognize this all and recognizing this all will help you to to recognize the very nature of this life so that is related to development of the awareness because without developing the awareness you can't experience that if you develop the thinking pattern you may not going to get it so when it come to that one of the important thing when when you want to develop and cultivate the mind you have to have ability to to have undisturbed mind so this undisturbed mind another way we call the balanced mind clear mind because otherwise how we see things as it is and most of time we develop a situation to build a un the kind of like a disturb ourselves and that disturb mind another way we call unconscious so the conscious mind means that you have the awareness so unconscious mind means it is also a part of the the consciousness so that mean you can transform this unconsciousness to consciousness but the thing is in day to day life intensely we create unconscious situations so because of that this unconscious environment become more and more and more stronger so being conscious it doesn't matter whatever the good or bad or right or wrong so whatever the situation if you are capable to face it with the conscious mind and it that situation will help you to transform to to more higher level so yesterday was the the christmas day and i want to bring a simple example from the the jesus life so before the jesus crucifix and that day in the evening they normally they give kind of like a very bitter strong wine for that people maybe to get out of the pain but that day jesus reject that say no to that wine let me handle it conscious mind so that's a very important message even though that he going to have a very painful difficult hard moment see that he reject the wine because he don't want to be unconscious so being conscious is the very base or the foundation for the transformation 
but look ourselves. And especially with the, the alcohol or the drugs or more other things, the, even the medicine and poison, food, even the sensual desires, we always like to mesmerize ourselves and we like to be unconscious. It's kind of like we like to get lost in this world. Even though you see your eyes clearly, hear clearly, smell clearly, taste clearly, feel clearly, understand clearly, sometimes you say, no, I don't want. Even and sometimes when very difficult situations come, because that is where you have to be conscious. In that very moment when you become unconscious, maybe you make more mistakes. You Maybe you're going to get so mad, angry. And out of that anger, so just imagine with that anger when you die, you're going to come back with the more great anger, strong anger. And sadness, worry, unhappiness. Because when you have the unconscious mind, that is what you experience always, fear. And when more painful situations come, and we like to, we accept, and we are the one who create that unconscious. We are the one who activate, ignite our unconscious is inside us. So that is one thing. And sometimes not even with the, the sad or very difficult heart situations. Just imagine when a good moment comes, happy moment comes. People are not capable to handle the happiness, face to the happiness, be with the happiness, be with the joy. People are not capable to, to enjoy the moment with the very conscious mind. What they want to do, they want to be unconscious. That's why most of the time with the happy moment, people use a lot of drugs, Alcohol, nicotine, and a lot of unnecessary things. Why? Because we are so weak inside to be conscious, even with the happy moment. Even though in the very conventional life, we look for happiness and satisfaction, on the surface level, it is just a name for all of us. Because when it comes to the real happiness, we are not capable to handle it. Then if it is so, why you want to be unconscious? So even when it comes to meditation, If you want to develop the transformation, if you want to develop the wisdom, why you want to get into kind of like a mesmerizing feelings? And sometimes people say, oh, I start to practice meditation. Then uh, something happened to me. I didn't know what happened. It's kind of like everything went blank. What is that? So it's kind of like you became unconscious. So you don't know what happened. And there are very you know, famous spiritual teachers and they say, oh, I went to the mountain and then I start to practice meditation for a few minutes. When I wake up, it was three days, seven days. I don't know what happened to me. So that's when he was unconscious. It's kind of like he went to blank mood. And even sometimes people like to get into high mental powers. 
So what does that mean? Kind of like the, you want to develop the awareness, you look for transformation, you look for happiness and satisfaction, but when the happiness come to in front of you, you are not capable to experience it with the very conscious mind. You, you just go blank. You wish to be blank. So that is not meditation. So then always remember, Developing consciousness, developing awareness is totally depend on moment by moment, moment by moment, the choice that you make. So that is that is why that the awareness will lead you, guide you be with you, hold you. When it comes to when, it is not kind of like you entering to black hole. So then you have to understand what is, what is meditation. So there was a monk. There were two, two friends. Early in the morning, they start to walk. They went for a high, kind of like a hike. And the top of the mountain, they knew there is a monastery. This monk practiced meditation. And somehow, these three friends walking and far away, they saw this monk a little bit far away from the temple. And one friend told, oh, that monk, what he doing here? This temple, temple is the other side. What he's doing here? And then he, one person told, oh, maybe he waiting for someone. It looked like he waiting for somebody. And then another person told, no, 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 no. It looked like he looked for something. And uh, then another uh, other one told, no, it looked like he's uh, he doing meditation. So then somehow they came closer to the monk and one friend asked, Oh, Vendabal, it looked like you are waiting for somebody. And then the monk looked at him and replied, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm, I'm not waiting for anything. I don't wait for anything. And then the other friend told, oh, it look like you look for something. And then the monk told, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for anybody. And then the third person told, oh, then it looks like you are practicing, you are, you are doing meditation. And the monk smiled and told, I'm not doing meditation. So that's a very important you know, answer. That if you do meditation, the most of time that is what we say. And you say maybe, I do meditation. So then you have to recognize, who is I? So then we say, I do meditation. So who is I? Who I am? And meditation, what I do meditate. So that, that means it is something that I do. So it is separate from me. So what it is? 
what is that meditation exist from me, separate from me? And then that the three of you know them was kind of like a so this is like a puzzle. And then they are so, then what are you doing? And then the monk told, I'm not doing anything. And he closed his eyes. So that's the same story. It's talk about the satori. It's a kind of like a dhyana or the dhyana. Because it is not the kind of like a you can explain through words. But it is a kind of like a moment of being and moment of experience. So it is not when it comes to personally yourself, it is not you, whoever the practitioner, I do or whatever that action. So that is totally different when it comes to our day-to-day -day action. So because in day-to-day -day things that there is a subject and object. So, but now here, when it comes to meditation, that you can't keep that subject and object separation or the connection. Because subject itself becomes the object. You, when it comes to you, I am, can you separate the breathing from you? Just imagine, so forget about the inhalation because it, it never reached to yet. You know, even though it come very closer to your nose, it never became you yet. Just imagine that. So then entire in your body, still, you have this oxygen related to the same properties like the, the inhalation that already waiting to go in. It's not a different properties. The same elements, same thing. So then I means that inhalation and the, the exhalation means it's not something separate entity from you. It's the, the same thing. So when it comes to observing inhalation, exhalation, it is, so even though practice point of view to, to build up our practice, we use different, different interpretation. So one thing is concentration. So when it comes to concentration, that's very mean, you are become very limited to certain kind of elements or the properties or the, the moment. So the thing is, in a deeper level, can you become limited to a moment? Like uh, even the samadhi. Can you become very limited to one second of samadhi? Who you are to become like that? So the concentration is always like, uh, because this word came to this subject out of the, this, this the Western world, this behavior and in a laboratory, in certain place when they observe the, the, the sky through the telescope, in the laboratory through the microscope and through the lens, when they observe something and you, you are very focused, you are very limited to certain property. 
So that is the very nature of concentration. You bring all your attention to that whatever the, the point of object. So, but yourself, you can't be very limited. So then in the beginning, you bring your attention to sensation of the inhalation, exhalation, but that doesn't mean you become very limited. So that is two different ways. You observe the inhalation, exhalation, but it is not mean you become very limited to inhalation or exhalation. Another one is the contemplate. So the contemplate means in a larger scale, still you become very limited and in a certain boundary level, in, for a certain limit, you have a very conscious decision to put your attention. So, but when it comes to your mind, when it comes to the moment of experience, just even when you observe the inhalation, exhalation, you can't make a boundary Oh, my awareness is going to be only with this. No. So that is why concentration is not the, the, the cultivation of the mind. Contemplation is not the cultivation of the mind. It is a part of the journey. While you practice, it is a part of the journey. So the in the larger scale and that the final destination should be the boundless, total, complete moment of awareness within your body, your feelings, your mind and with all phenomena. So that all four foundations all together in the moment of experience. And when it comes to that moment of experience, what you can see, these all four things, your body, your feelings, your mind, and the, the very phenomena that all change moment by moment. And it is not permanent. And also it always unsettle, unbalance. It's waiting to jump. It's, it's like fire unsatisfactory nature. It's always fire. It's always try to catch something, catch something. Fire the same. So whatever close to it, if the, the whatever it is strong, it, it's not, it's, it's capable, if it is capable to handle, it's okay. But otherwise, the fire, whatever close to it, what is the nature of the fire? It's catch. So this our body, our mind, our feelings, our inner nature the same. Whatever close to it, it catch. That is our life. That is the deeper inner behavior. So once you see that, 
you you know, you recognize the very moment of this moment of experience within your own consciousness within your own feelings within you and without any boundary you are capable to understand this moment is not permanent Another thing is, deeply you can see, it happens according to the cause and effect. It's not happen according to your inner will. It's never going to happen according to your interest. Even though you think, this is me, this all happens. Your body has a different nature. Body not respond to you. It has a different nature. Your feelings has a different nature. Your mind has a different nature. Your whole this phenomena has a different nature. But this all together, when it comes together, you feel like, oh, this is me. This is I am. But if you look very carefully, you recognize this each and everything has its own way of Law. So it's nothing respond, responsible deeply for you. So once you recognize deeply this inner behavior, that recognition will clear sharp. Again and again, again and again, your awareness. Because so far in our life, we neglected our awareness. So awareness is not separate from the body, mind, feelings or the, the, the phenomena. When these all four things come together, the, more, the most highest experience, the, the spirit, the, all these four things bring the, the awareness. But that is the highest. But focus, rather than focusing to it, we just go with this part by part. And then by the time what happens, when these parts become improfitable, or when these parts become weaker, it affect for your higher experience. So awareness is the, the ultimate result of this all because it is not a separate entity. Your awareness is the highest. It come out of your body, your mind, your feelings, and your dharma or the phenomena or the dharmata. And if you neglect it and just go with the body, if you just respond on to the body and if you try to go with that, then what will happen? You always keep feeding and maintaining the body, body, body. So by the time what will happen, it has its own nature and it's kind of like you corrupt the system. You break all the rules. So when you break all the rules with your physical body, what will happen? You get sick. It's not getting ill. You get sick. You get into disease. And you get unnecessary. And, and as a result of that, what will happen? You get the pain. So then now your body with the pain. And then what will happen? Your awareness is helpless. And then the other one is feelings. When you go with the feelings, when the, rather than bring the attention to awareness, when you go with the feelings, what will happen? Then it, it ignite by the emotions and then it become more and more and more stronger, stronger, stronger. And you neglect the, the ultimate result. And then it breaks the rules. And as a result of that, 
you have going to have a very disturbed mind. It bounces back. Because once you break the rules, you are responsible for that. And the mind the same. When you neglect the self-discipline and being a little bit hard on you and always allow your mind to jump into past or the future, your mind becomes crazy. So then it is very difficult for you to to keep the balance. And then the inner nature, even though it is invisible, we can't see it, that the whole system that run and respond with the, the body mind feelings and that also start to collapse. So then as a result of that, what will happen to your awareness become helpless. And then it become helpless, it is still there, then it, it go to sleeping mood. It neglect you, it neglect the body. The, it neglect you means it neglect the body. Your awareness neglect the mind. Your awareness neglect the feelings. So then it is not the, that uh, the, the awareness is something and then you, there is a separate you, no. It disconnect. That is the, the kind of like a word. Your awareness disconnect from your physical body. So then the body survive itself and that is what we call the habits or the patterns. Once the body connect with to the awareness, it no need the habits or the patterns. It's go with moment by moment, moment by moment. And it, it's more capable to adapt to any situation. So that's the power of human human body. And the feelings the same. Once the awareness disconnect from the feelings, it's more go with the emotions, drama, unbalance, fear. So once the, the feelings connect with the awareness, and in that level, you have more discipline, you have more balance. And the mind connect, disconnect from the awareness. What will happen? Mind go with just the, the pattern of the thoughts. It's another way we call the memory. When you don't have the awareness, mind depend on memory. So when the mind depend on memory, in case if that memory is not available when you need, when the mind need, it go crazy. But if the awareness is there, mind no need the memory. So the very, the inner nature of the dharmata or the phenomena, the very entire system, when it disconnect from the, the awareness, it, is, it go with its own pattern. And it become anything. So that's why, and from this human body, you can drop into very lower existence. Even as a, this human body, you can drop it to very lower level of human existence. But when the, the awareness is connected to phenomena, it's capable to run in this human existence. So this connection, bringing this connection come out of only being in the moment. So the meditation is, the bhavana means cultivation of your mind name, bringing this connection, keep the awareness not the thinking, keep the awareness with your body, keep the awareness with your feelings, keep the awareness with your mind and keep the awareness with your phenomena. 
That means keep the awareness with the moment of experience. Not about you know thinking, developing thinking or kind of like uh, in interference to whatever that happens. It is not a mental interference. It's a mental mental recognition. So that aware, if you are capable to, to have that. So moment by moment, moment by moment. So by the time you will see the very meaning of this human existence, the very meaning of bhavana or the very meaning of cultivation of the mind. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit. So your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. Bring your attention to your body and a scan head to toes yourself and say Suopatveva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think, we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. Allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens to the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light. Through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance, without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Tavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe tatta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati a buddham puje mi dhammam puje mi sangham puje mi Addaya imaya pati pati a jati jaravya di maranam ha pari bundisami Idam me punya kam manga savakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka pam chatu Blessing.